The Tom Woods Show, episode 766. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hi everybody, Tom Woods here. I've had a lot of requests from people to do an episode, and don't worry, the whole episode is not about this, to do an episode about podcasting itself, what we might call a meta episode, where I draw back the curtain and show you what goes on behind the scenes to make the show possible, because there are a number of people out there who are interested in podcasting, and since I have a little bit of experience in that area, between this one and the Contra Krugman podcast, I've got over 800 podcast episodes under my belt. I do know something about it. So I want to take a little time to do that, and I think even if you're not interested in starting a podcast, you might find this interesting. How does somebody working out of a small office or out of his home, produce something of fairly decent audio quality and get it uploaded so that the whole world can listen to it. I mean, it's an interesting question, isn't it? So I want to do that, but I'm also, I also also want to cover a couple of other things that I've learned about over the years because today I've released my latest ebook that's free, and it's called... Because all the things I'm going to talk about, maybe I'll talk about only a few of them, but whether it's podcasting or um, publishing a book, self-publishing, which, as you know, I've done with my book, Real Descent. I didn't know anything about self-publishing until I did it myself. Uh, that, blogging, affiliate stuff, all that stuff, these are also things that can be monetized. They won't necessarily be monetized, but they are things that, if done right, can also earn you a little dough. And especially being a libertarian, you should not be apologetic about earning money. Everybody needs money, and if you're earning it, honestly, then you're earning it because people like what you're doing. You're being rewarded for what you're doing. So let the Rachel Maddows of the world be anguished about the earning of money. I'm not, and you shouldn't be. So the ebook is called Five Paths to an Online Income. And even if you don't ultimately use these five things, all of which I've used, and I give you the step-by-step, -step, look over my shoulder overview of how I do these things, even if you never use them for the purpose of monetization, the book will still be a great step-by-step -step explanation of how to do them, how to start a podcast, how to self-publish a book, how to start as an affiliate marketer and earn a little extra dough from your uh, website. Well, that, obviously, you, w you wouldn't be doing affiliate work if you weren't earning money. But you see my point. I, in other words, I give strategies for monetizing, but I also show the nuts and bolts step-by-step -step stuff. So, for instance, with the podcast... The, the early episodes are not don't have audio quality that are as good as I wish they had been, and I was so obsessed with my work for the Ron Paul curriculum at that time, not obsessed, overwhelmed with my work for the Ron Paul curriculum, that I simply didn't have the time to investigate the problem and solve it. Would have been solved a lot sooner if I hadn't had that big project. Well, anyway, you'll get a lot of competing advice from people about what equipment you should have, and how you should set it up, and and this and that. And for a while, I went through different mixers. I had all this complicated setup. And I'm telling you, after having done over 800 episodes, you don't need any of that. You know what I have? You know the entirety of my equipment, other than obviously, other than the computer, a microphone. That's it. A USB microphone that plugs directly into the side of the computer. So I have the Audio Technica ATR. 2100. This, these details, are you'll, you'll find these in the book. By the way, how do you get that book? It's at pathstoincome.com, pathstoincome.com, or you can text the word PROSPER to the number 44222, and you'll get it. I'll also link to it at tomwoods.com slash 766. Anyway, the ATR 2100, last I checked, costs about $79. Now, I also have a much better microphone by some standards, an Electro Voice RE20, and that costs about $449. But yet, I use the ATR2100. I just think it sounds better. So if you want to have a podcast, you need that, and you need a boom arm for the microphone. But otherwise, that's it. You don't need a, you don't need a mixer. You don't need any of this stuff. If you do it right, you just need a microphone that plugs into the computer. And that makes it a lot easier to do the podcast on the go. All you need to do is get your computer, and as I've learned the hard way, pack 
pack the microphone like it's one of your children. I mean, super, 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 not, not that you should be packing a child. You follow what I'm saying here? Just be careful with the microphone. And you can just go around and do the podcast anywhere. So that's what I do. Don't buy a microphone for less than $79. Save up for the Audio-Technica. Normally, I like to find ways to shave dollars off and save people money, but this is the one thing you really can't cut back on. You've really you've got to get at least that microphone. Then in the chapter on podcasting, I give all the details. What do you do next? Because you need to get hosting for your podcast uh, because you need a place to put all the episodes. can't put them all on your own website. You'll be overwhelmed. You've got to put them on a podcasting uh hosting company and all that. So, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts here. I do make a recommendation that'll save you an awful lot of time and aggravation if you're just starting in podcasting. would have saved me an awful lot of trouble. It's a product I get no affiliate commission for, but that I would absolutely do if I were a newbie, and that's podcastwebsites.com. It's John Lee Dumas's product, and it does like seven things for you that normally you needed seven different services to do and it almost makes you not want to do podcasting. Now, let me tell you something about when I record the episodes, I record my audio on a separate audio track from that of the guest. And I wasn't doing that in the beginning, and I didn't see the point of that. But there's a real value in it. And it turns out the value, one of the values is, if we're all on the same track, the guest and me, and then during one of my responses, the guest is going... You know, there's some kind of noise in the background. The only way I can get that noise out is by because we're, the noise, the guy, and me are all on the same track. I'd have to be ripping out some of my own audio. So I can't do that. So that's why it's better to have him on a separate track because then while I'm talking, I can completely silence him and get rid of all that noise. Or if, you know, if, if I'm talking and all of a sudden he's got a hacking cough, I don't have to go back and redo what I just said. I just silence his track when we go to put the episode together, and then I just keep talking. So you record on separate tracks, and then you simply line them up together, and off you go. You're, you're off to the races. I use, now there are a lot easier ways to do this, but I just have a powerful enough computer that I run two audio programs at once. I do, now what I have in the ebook is a little, little different because it's what I used as of a couple of months ago, but... I have a slightly different approach now, but both approaches work. I use something called Audacity, which is a free audio editing download. I, I record the guest's track on Audacity, and simultaneously I'm running something called WavePad. I think that does cost 50 bucks, but worth every penny, to record my own audio, and then we just match them up and you're off to the races. Now then, you're going to want, like for instance, nobody likes my intro to the show, the, the, the musical intro. I get that, but you know, I can't find a good one. I just can't. I have people offering them to me, and then they come in, and they're not good, and I feel bad telling them that. So I've just given up. I can't please people with it. I like the intro we have for Contra Krugman, though. If you haven't heard Contra Krugman, that's got a great intro. I used a site called Audiobag, audiobag.com for that. So you got to get a little intro. you got to make a graphic for your podcast that will show up on people's iPods. There's a lot that goes on here. In the chapter on podcasting, I talk about how to promote your podcast, how to grow the audience, and I talk about if you're interested in finding sponsorships as a source of revenue to help keep your show going, I, I give links to places that will help you do that. The th Probably the three biggest I link to in here. Uh, Midroll is one. Archer Avenue, if you have a tech podcast. And then AdvertiseCast.com. These are all worth looking at. And then I spend the rest of the time in the chapter talking about how do you monetize, potentially monetize a podcast. It's wonderful for a podcast to be a labor of love, but it's also... Nice for it to be a labor for money. I mean, it, you know, there's no problem with earning money for your labor. So there's a little bit of a, a thing with podcasts. You see how easy it is? It, I don't have this, this office that looks like a recording studio. It just doesn't. It's a microphone plugged into the side of my computer. In fact, people who were on the Contra Cruise saw that because we recorded an episode of Contra Krugman on the Contra Cruise, and Bob and I each simply had a microphone plugged into a, a computer, and that was it. Now, let's talk, let's say a quick thing about publishing a book, because I know a lot of you out there, deep down, 
you'd love to publish a book. I don't know why. I think you're crazy. <laughs> but but I think you may want to. And again, even if you're not, well, it might be interesting to know how easily somebody can get a book published these days and what exactly does it involve. I had never done it before. I'd always gone the traditional publishing route. And then just for the heck of it, because it was just it was a book of essays, I said, L let's see what happens if, if I publish Real Descent with uh, Amazon Create Space. It's basically self-publishing. Now, let me tell you, there are good reasons for self-publishing, and there can be good reasons for traditional publishing. But a bad reason, a bad reason to avoid self-publishing is the following argument. If I go the self-publishing route, I won't have the marketing arm of a great publisher behind me to promote my book, and then I'm going to be at a disadvantage. The trouble with that argument is that most publishers do not invest anything in marketing your book. Now, I've been lucky. Regnery, which I've published with a lot, Regnery has a very different business model from most publishing companies because Regnery will publish about two dozen, three dozen books a year. But they pour all the resources they have into each and every one of those. A publisher like Doubleday, on the other hand, maybe they publish 2,000 books a year, and they pour their resources into, I don't know, 5% of them. And for everybody else, for the other 1,900, you're left hanging out to dry, basically. So, so much for the great marketing arm that your publisher is going to have. True, there's prestige being published, published by Doubleday, and I'm glad I've been published by Basic Books and Random House and Columbia University Press, and I wouldn't really do that differently, to be honest with you. But if I'm not getting any marketing or promotion, and all I'm getting is the interior satisfaction of knowing I published with a great house, well, you know, that wears off after a while. Then, then you just want reasonable terms and reasonable compensation. So don't think by self-publishing you're depriving yourself of a great marketing weapon. You ain't. I'm telling you that there is no, that's that does not exist. That's that does not happen. Also, the revenue. Let's talk about how much does an author earn on a book. I bet people are curious about that. Again, it doesn't matter if you want to publish a book or not. You might be curious about this. What I can tell you is the typical trade publisher. Not academic publishers are even more stingy than this, but. Given that half the book price goes right to the bookstore, because bookstores get at least a 50% discount off the retail price, there's no way you're getting more than 50%, and you're not going to get anywhere near 50%. You're going to get, the way it generally works is you get 10% on the first 5,000 sold, you get 12.5% on the second 5,000, and 15% beyond that. And that's it. So that is your giant revenue. So when Amazon is paying you something like 70% on each sale, and I think, I think that's the percentage for the Kindle. Kindle might be a bit, what was it? I think it's a, somewhere around 70%. Well, any author in his right mind be dancing a jig to get that kind of payment. So there's a lot more money to be made in self-publishing. Yeah, you're on your own promoting it, but you know what? In most traditional publishing scenarios, you're also on your own, and you're earning you know 10%. Or 15 percent. So, th so I talk about exactly the step-by-step -step thing. Of what exactly I did? I wanted a Kindle edition of Real Descent. I wanted a print edition, and I promoted it with a simple landing page, realdescent.com, uh, which I created at Lead Pages. Very simple. So, Amazon Create Space is definitely the way to go. They are top-notch. They make it easy. They make it easy because I don't know what I'm doing. Here's how you have to format it to submit it, all that stuff. Book covers, that's another question. You can solicit book cover people from a lot of freelancing websites. You can get a really cheap book cover at Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Really, really, really rock bottom cheap. And I didn't do that for Real Descent, but I would do that for my free eBooks, at least some of them. For I really went out on a limb. I really went out uh, big time. Uh, in terms of trying to make this particular ebook that I'm talking about now look really nice. So again, paths to income.com or text the word prosper to 44222. Well, anyway, I have used Fiverr for a couple of my free ebook covers. Because look, it's a free ebook. Nobody's going to complain. The cover is not attractive enough. Really? You know, 
go jump in a lake. So I did that for my my ebook, uh, 14 Hard Questions for Libertarians Answered. I did it for Bernie Sanders is Wrong. I did it for uh, the first ebook I did for the show, which was uh, just all the transcripts from 2013. That's definitely a very, very respectable way of going. I talk about the reasons behind giving away a free ebook. And, you know, for me, giving away the free ebook has four major benefits. I believe in the ideas in these books and I want them to be spread around. Secondly, sometimes the ebook will have affiliate links of mine. So if people click on something and order, I earn a commission. Now I'm going to warn you, this is something you won't hear anywhere, almost anywhere. Don't put Amazon affiliate links in your ebook because it's technically a violation of their affiliate program to have your links anywhere other than on your website or social media or something. They don't want you emailing their links and it it's not expressly clear that you can put them in an ebook and it looks like the answer is no to that. You don't want to get kicked out of that program, so don't do that. Then some of these ebooks incidentally promote some of my paid services like Liberty Classroom or uh, the Ron Paul curriculum stuff like that. And then finally, a free ebook is a great premium to offer as an enticement to get people to sign up to your email list. That's what you should be doing. If you want to have any success online, you're going to need an email list. Now, I just had Andrew Hansen on. He doesn't use that approach, and he's very successful. So I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's highly, highly unusual and unorthodox and difficult, I think, to do it without an email list. Plus, it's not going to hurt. What could it hurt to build up an email list, a list of people who are interested enough in what you're doing that they part with their email addresses? Almost nobody's willing to part with an email address these days. So that's very, very worthwhile. So you want to look into that. And when it comes to a free ebook, by the way, to get people to sign up to your list or something, bear in mind you don't have to write that book from scratch. You could take a whole bunch of your best blog posts, make each one a chapter, and there's your ebook. Because I hate to break this to you, most people have not read all your blog posts. And even those who have would probably not think it was a bad idea to have them all in a convenient form. If, you know, one ebook with all your stuff in it. Ed Fazer, for example, is a guy I like very much. He's got these very, very long, detailed, intellectually challenging blog posts, and he's got so, so many of them, I could never possibly catch up on them. But if he had a themed ebook on a particular th theme of blog posts that have shown up on his blog over the years, your darn toot and I would sign up for that, and I would get it and read it. So you've got the content. Once you've been blogging for a while or doing podcasts or whatever, you believe it or not, you actually have the content. So you don't have to worry so much about doing that. I mean, it's true. You can hire somebody to write your ebook for you if you want. You can go to Upwork.com and hire a freelancer. It's just it's not my thing. I mean, it would be weird if I were hiring people for that. This is what I do. I I write books. Then I talk about audiobooks, saying don't forget to do audiobooks because there are a lot of benefits. There's a very nice commission structure. It's definitely a good idea to to go the audiobook route, especially if you're a good reader. You don't stumble over your words, and you can read in a voice that people are going to want to hear. To have the book read by the author gets a lot more people to, to buy it. And I, I know that, too. I mean, I do that, too, because I find a lot of these people they hire to read audiobooks are just absolutely sleep-inducing. It's just horrifying and awful. So don't do that to your readers. Try and record your own voice for the audiobook. So I talk in here about how I did that, how did I get it formatted to be submitted. I mean, these it sounds like there's so many steps that it's like a barrier to entry. But that's why I wrote the ebook, so you can just see every single step. All you got to do is click here, and here's how to do it. Click here, here's how to do it. So you don't have to go through the hundreds of hours I went through. Now you'll just know it. So I'm cutting down on the world's learning curve with this book. Now, marketing your book, that's a tricky thing because there are, there are many, many, many books out there. How are you going to get your book noticed? I offer some strategies for that and some places uh, like the, the Author Marketing Club that, that give you free training and resources to help you do that. How do you get your book to stand out? So there's that chapter as well. Now, the other chapters of the book talk about blogging. Can you make blogging pay? You can, even in this crowded internet,
but you have to know what you're doing. You have to do it right. And even then, there are no guarantees. So I would say blog because you like doing it, which is why I, that's always why I blogged, because I like doing it. And if you earn some dough from it, then all the better. I think that's the right approach to take with blogging. Don't go in there saying, I saw some guy earns a five-figure monthly income from blogging, and I know for a fact I'll be able to achieve that. Not necessarily. Depends on your subject, for one thing. Maybe some people, even if you have all the great techniques in the world, nobody wants to read about what you're talking about. It's not going to go anywhere. So, all right, so there's that. I would say blogging can be quite lucrative if you know what you're doing. Whatever you do, do not think that you'll earn the money through advertising. You would need to have an audience the size of the Huffington Post for advertising to have any kind of a impact on you financially. That's what I would say. So that's the wrong business model. But I see a lot of people going down that route. I'll start getting some readers, then I'll put some banner ads on, and then I'll kick back and watch the checks roll in. The checks will roll in all right, but they'll be for 12 cents a piece. Not worth it. There's a whole different model you should be approaching with blogging. And it's not try to attract readers and get as many ad clicks as you can. Because that, that's a dead end. You're going to hate yourself. And I don't want that. I want you to love yourself. So don't do that. So check out the, the book for that. I'll give you the details about that. I also have just a quick little chapter on a couple of sites you can use if you're interested in, well, not just getting the services of a freelancer, but being a freelancer online. There's so many things people would like help with or that you could do online. I guarantee, or at least I can't guarantee, but there's a pretty darn good chance, let's say, that you have a skill somebody would be willing to pay for. And you maybe just didn't know it because you did not know just how wide the array of skills that are offered online are. Uh, so, or, or is rather, I guess. So that's also in there. And then finally, I have a chapter on affiliate marketing. And people are very intrigued by this because if you're a good affiliate marketer, and I'm going to just come right out and tell you, I am an excellent affiliate marketer. I'm very good at this. I've only been doing it a couple of years, but I have I figured out the ins and outs very quickly. And I'm going to be very blunt because you're my listeners and we can have these conversations and nobody else has to know. It's just us. When I saw, I'm, again, you're gonna. You, I hope you won't think badly of me when I tell you this. I'm just being honest. There are in some segments of affiliate marketing, some, I don't know, not super reputable people. Let's say knuckle draggers, I'll call them. And when I saw how successful these knuckle draggers were with affiliate marketing, I thought, come on, if these people can, who can barely write a coherent sentence can do it, then I think I can do it. What people like about it is that if you're good at it and you're promoting... Th- like for instance, I promote the Ron Paul curriculum as an affiliate. Well, obviously, I stand by that program, right? Why wouldn't I? I, I created hundreds of videos for that program. Or other things that I've used, like I like TomWoods.com slash microphone takes you right to the Amazon page selling the exact microphone I'm speaking to you through now. So I stand by things that I like, and that I use, and I promote them. So other people can know what kind of microphone should I use or what's a good homeschool program. They get a good service and I get a commission. But I do it so that people, a lot of times people who order through my link, get special benefits. And this is a major, major part of the strategy. So for the Ron Paul curriculum, you know that my website, ronpaulhomeschool.com, offers $160 of free bonuses to people who use my link. So why wouldn't you use my link? Because it gives you my Liberty Classroom, gives you one of my books, autographed, gives you an extra course that I designed just for people who use my link. So that's work. That's definitely work. People think this is a get-rich-quick scheme. No, it's more of a get-rich-slowly scheme. I'm still in the slow lane here. So I did. I made an entire course just for people who use my link. That's work. It's not like I'm sitting in a lounge chair drinking lemonade in the, in the summer sun. I work for this. It's, it's a lot of effort to pour that into that. Check out ronpaulhomeschool.com. I mean, that, that site, it, you know, that's a lot of ad copy to write. That's a, that took work. But you see how it works. Or Bluehost, for example. I make sure my listeners who are on my email list know when they're having sales so they can get the best price on web hosting. And then if they use my link, they get excellent bonuses. Two dozen video tutorials to help them, a mention on the show, a backlink to their site on my site, and that matters a lot when people go to search for them. They're going to 
show up higher in the search results because my site is viewed as a good site by Google because it has so many backlinks itself. And then finally, I created a, a private Facebook group for bloggers who join through my link. And we help each other and we learn from each other and we give advice and technical support and stuff like that. That's a great bonus. If you can't think of any other bonus, then a private Facebook group doesn't cost you anything to maintain, but you'll benefit from it, certainly, because you're going to have a lot of smart people in there, chances are, and they'll enjoy being in it. So that's definitely a good bonus. So there are, there are some good strategies for affiliate marketing, but then the question becomes, what products do I promote? And they need to be things you know something about or you've used that are reputable, that you trust, that have good results. And so I give, I give links to different sites that bring together hundreds, if not thousands, uh, in fact, I'm sure it's thousands, of different kinds of affiliate products. And then you see what's a good fit for your website, what's a good fit for your audience. And then you can go that route. So as I've said, I've, I've had a lot of success with that. And I'm going to show you in this chapter the exact steps that I've followed. There's nothing that I've left out. And in fact, in, a, in an earlier episode, it might have been 610, I, I took about five to seven minutes and I just went through exactly how I earned commissions through the Ron Paul affiliate program. And I need that, by the way, because I, I lost two years of my life making those videos. So I got to have something to show for that. The, <clears throat> the royalties for the courses are not what's what are keeping the lights on around here, but the affiliate program really helps. I designed that landing page, ronpaulhomeschool.com. It's a one-page site. That's it. It's a beautiful site, and professionals designed it, but once that was designed, it's a fixed cost, and it's up there forever. I've got three bonuses that are relevant to the product, and then I drive people to that landing page, ronpaulhomeschool.com, through free traffic from my blog, by mentioning it on the podcast, stuff like that, in my email newsletter, I mention it from time to time. I haven't in a while. I probably should again. And then some paid sources. Facebook ads, pitch to people who are interested in both Ron Paul and homeschooling. Well, duh, there's your natural audience. And Google AdWords. And I just bid for appropriate keywords people might be searching for. And then I'm off to the races. I got traffic coming into that site, and some of that traffic converts into sales and into commissions for me. Now, there's work involved there. You've got to learn Facebook advertising. You've got to learn Google AdWords. Uh, you know, you got to find a, a reliable person to set up a, a nice, attractive landing page for you. And I have a recommendation of my own in this ebook that I've been using for my site, for Contra Krugman, for a ton of stuff, for the t shirt design, for the Contra Cruise, for, the, for all kinds of things. I have a recommendation of a company that I love and I wouldn't change for you know for anything so this isn't like something again you just sit back and money automatically rolls in it's not and I think sometimes people think anytime you talk about earning money online it's a get rich quick scheme because they imagine that if it's online it can't really be work it's just you hitting a few keystrokes and then sitting back and smoking a cigar made out of hundred dollar bills <laughs> that's not it just because you're at a computer doesn't mean it's not real work. It is real work. And you do have to put effort in. But on the other hand, it's not that hard to learn Google AdWords, right? Take What does it take, one afternoon? It's not that hard to learn Facebook advertising. Now that, if you really want to maximize your impact, you're going to want to take a, uh, a lot longer on that. I, I use the Rick Mulready super, super duper advanced course now that I'm over the, the elementary stuff. But it's not impossible, right? So it can be done, but it's it does take work. Once you put the work in, then if you've done it right, then you do, in you know, more or less, if you keep those ads running, you tweak them from time to time, then yeah, for, it basically does mean that income comes in on autopilot. That, that, that is what happens. But it's it's not just that. I mean... If you really, really want to do as well as you can, you won't just sit back. It's sort of like people who say, ah, I, I can earn X dollars, or I'll show you how to earn X dollars working only two hours a day. Well, if that were true, and in some cases there are things that you can earn X dollars earning, uh, working two hours a day, then I'd want to earn 4X by working eight hours a day. So the same with affiliate marketing. Yeah, I could just sit back and get random money, but I'd like to supercharge the random money, so I'm not just going to sit back. 
But the point is that you will have the immense satisfaction of driving around and, you know, at a red light, you ch at a red light, you understand, you check your phone and you just earned a commission while you were driving around listening to music. Or you wake up in the morning, you turn on your phone and you earned a commission while you were sleeping or three or four commissions while you were sleeping. That's great. That gives you a, a kind of an independence, gives you an additional income stream. I don't know anybody who couldn't use an additional income stream. And this one has really, really helped us out because of the unbelievable expenses we've had. How am I going to cover them? Well, I've developed an additional income stream for myself. And it's, it's been working out pretty well. So I'm going to show you how I do it in this ebook. And if, if it's something you want to try, great. Or if it's something you say, ah, I don't think this is for me, that's fine too. But at least you took a look at it. So that's a little bit of an overview of what I've just done here with this book, Five Paths to an Online Income. And you can read it over at pathstoincome.com or by texting the word PROSPER to the number 44222. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Oh,